Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, today we're going to talk about two things. One, we're going to talk with the silver wolves, and two, I'm going to give you a quick update on the new haversack. Now, this is the production, what it will look like, Red Hawk haversack that I've been talking about. I'm doing field trials right now. I've already created um, a prototype, got a prototype back from Jay. This is what the production one will look like. I'll let you get a little closer look at it. Okay, just like the other one, you can now snap it closed and the lid stays down. It's really easy to unsnap. Got these little wings that'll get out of the way so it's not going tap, tap, tap when you don't want it to snap down. So you can leave it just loose like a regular haversack, but if you need to secure it, you can. And at the same time, when you're going to put it on top of the rucksack, you snap it down so it doesn't flip forward when you bend forward. Then you've got the two internal pockets. And you still got the big flat pocket. And you still got the same room and capacity inside. So you've got a top pocket, which is a little bit shallow, perfect for putting a knife or something like that in, etc. It's like three inches deep something like that and then you got a bigger pocket now that's like four inches deep down in the bottom and that's what we're going to talk about today for silver wolves but I, I my thinking is it's a perfect place to put a little small fire kit in here you know lighter stuff like that quick grab right there so I don't have to dig out my big fire kit okay that's the red hawk that we're going to try to bring it out um, yes, it will be made in Cordura. For those of you that like it, my niece will be making it if we can get the cost. Same thing with it will be made out of wax canvas like this one is if we can get the cost down. Um, as you know, my, my haversack is not cheap because nobody else has all these features in it and that's a lot of sewing and a lot of work. And so this is not, this is even more work. So we're trying to get the cost down. That's where we're at right now. So I will, once I get done with a little field trial, I'm taking it out, working with it every day, trying to, you know, get a good feel of it. Any flaws, any changes, I want to do now. And uh, that's where we're at in it. As soon as I can get that worked out, probably by the 1st of July, I'll have an idea of a price. And I'm going to be honest with you, if it's just too dang expensive, we're not going to do it. I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm just not going to do that because everything right now is just so expensive. And the price of everything has gone sky high, as we know, because even though the actual cost of some piece of this may not be all that much higher. It went from like $15 to $19, okay? But the shipping, so you got to buy it from the manufacturer, pay them to ship it, to the guy that's making it, then he's got to make it, then he's got to pay to ship to me. You know, we I got to pay to ship to me, and then I got to repackage it to ship to you. There's three sets of shipping. Shipping has gone way up. And so that's what we're, we're trying to get things from manufacturing and stuff like to get the price down. Just trying to be open and straight up with you guys. And uh, that's where we're at. So somewhere around the first month, I will... Do my best to either have a price or etc. If we're not going to go into it because it's just so expensive, I'll tell you. You know, I'll just be straight up with you. Uh, next, while we're here today, silver wolves. We're going to talk about bug repellent and things that we need to do while we're out here and why. Okay, why is bug repellent such a big thing for us as silver wolves? One, we're not as young as we used to be. Two, our skin is not nearly as supple as it used to be. And what that means in English is whenever we get a bite, a cut, a something on it, it doesn't heal nearly as fast as it used to. And therefore, it itches us longer, it bothers us longer. So we need to try to curtail them as much as we can to keep that to a minimum. So what, what can we do? One, let's try to prevent being bitten in the first place. First, if you're one of those people that just seems to draw bugs out of the ether, 
like my wife. I can be sitting there wearing just a dang pair of swim trunks, nothing else, and I ain't got a bite on me. She's two feet to the right of me, and there's a cloud. There's a holding pattern of mosquitoes waiting to get their turn to get into. It's because her blood pH is really, really good. This is true more in women than it is in men. The blood pH is what they're looking for because any kind of mosquito, tick, chigger, any kind of uh, parasite like this that's wanting to come and bite you and use your blood for food or to incubate babies or whatever they're using it for, they need blood in their cycle. That's where they're going to come up and that, you know, that you're, you're sitting there and that, nye, 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 the mosquito gets around your ear. There's a reason for that. It's because they're around the face in this part, the skin's thin, and they're actually trying to smell you and see what your pH of your blood is. They're not pulling out a little chemistry set, but whether you smell good to eat or not, in, in a short thing. Since I'm a hypoglycemic, my pH is all over the place. And that's one of the reasons I don't get bit much, you know, whereas my wife, is not and her pH is a rock solid and just golden and because of that mosquitoes like her 10 times better than me that's the reason like I said we're sitting side by side and they're gonna go to her what can you do at fairly cheaply to, to help this one I'm you're going out this weekend to go camp out or go to the lake to fish or spend time with the grandkids outdoors or whatever like on Wednesday if it's not something that's gonna affect other medication Take B vitamins, any of the B vitamins. Um, what I, what my wife does is like on Wednesday, we're going out on Saturday, she'll start taking two a day, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That way it gets time to be in her system, and it will greatly reduce the amount of bug bites she gets. It ain't going to stop it. They're still coming to her, but it does tone it down significantly because adding a B vitamin changes your blood chemistry just a little bit. You don't smell or taste any different on your end. And then on Saturday, she takes the two, we go out, and then she stops taking them, see? And the body will flush it out. It's not something like, oh my God, you built up, it's going to take six months. It'll flush it out of your system in 72 hours. You know, it's just any the body can't use, you pee it. So don't go crazy with it, but, and if you've got a lot of medical conditions, of course, of course, of course. I'm not giving you medical advice. Talk to your medical care provider. But try taking B12 vitamin, like right off the shelf, B12s, or B whatever, and see if it helps you. Some people do better with B12. Some people do better with B1 or whatever it is. You know, I have several friends I've turned on to this. And that's going to reduce them coming to you. And when they get there, they don't like you. You taste better to them. So that normally will, that won't stop them coming up and going yin you, but it will stop them from biting you because you don't smell and taste good. Next are clothes. There's a stuff that you can buy at Walmart, they sell it in the sporting goods, called Pemethrin. Okay, read the directions. I say again, read the directions. This is not something you put on your skin. This is bad for us if you do that, when it's liquid form. But you're going to spray it or you're going to put it somehow onto your clothes. You get a mist bottle and mist it onto your clothes let them fully dry and this makes them bug repellent so as your body heat warms it up it's giving off you can also spray gear like packs hammocks i wouldn't spray something like a silk nylon tent because it may affect the waterproofing but things that are not waterproof like a uh, canvas pack like a uh, the shirt, the jacket, the whatever. Once it's fully dry, it's safe for us to wear it. But don't spray it on it wet and then put it on wet. So it's got to dry to be safe. There's something in there that's got to evaporate in it's safe. The, the bug juice, so to speak, is not the toxic part. It's whatever they're using to carry the bug juice in liquid form and then it evaporates. That's the stuff you don't want on you. Okay? So we're, we're going to do that. The next thing is some sort of bug repellent. Now, some people swear by like deep woods off. It never worked for me. It just, if, if they were biting me, it never slowed them down, which it was rare they were biting me. 
but it just never seemed to do it. For me, I get this Repel Lemon Eucalyptus. That works well for me. Skin so soft. Uh, used to be sold by Avon. Lotion worked really good. Uh, of course, you smell kind of pretty, but it keeps the bugs off of it. Don't just think all of these are created equal. If you get something and you use it and it don't seem to help, try another one till you find what works well with your blood chemistry. It's just like aftershave cologne or whatever. You can this guy puts it on and smells great. You put it on, it smells like you need to change the garbage. You know, it's just your blood chemistry, how you body reacts to it. So for me, this works really, really well. This is nothing for my wife. It don't even slow them down. So she uses Deep Woods Off, which works for her, plus her taking the B12, plus her outer stuff when we go camping has got permethrin in it. Her hammock has got permethrin in it. And that has helped greatly. Okay? Next, we've done you. We've done your clothing and gear and now we've done your skin what happens when you do get eat up and bit okay there's one more in there ticks chiggers etc as i said in a video not long ago uh camphor i've used vicks vapor rub before to put around uh all the bare areas if i'm around a lot of ticks and stuff you know around the inside of the shirt sleeve around the back of the collar around the waistband around my top of my socks and has really helped curtail and turn them off. Carry Vaseline or something with you, especially since we're a little older and we can't see as good as we once did. If you feel in a place that you can't see, back here in my butt or back here in my back, and I think I got a tick on me, take a gob of Vaseline and coat it. The tick breathes through his body, not through his head. His head embeds inside of you and locks on. And he's eating blood and he's engorging, right? So he's actually breathing through the body. If you gob up Vaseline all over him, he don't breathe. And he'll back out on his own. So if you've got one like someplace like behind an ear or something and you don't want to pull him out, you're probably going to leave a head in there, do that. Especially someplace I can't see it's back here behind me, use Vaseline. Or better yet, Vicks Vapor Rub, which is Vaseline with camphor does just as good a job and will get them to back off of you. We've done this several times with small kids that we've been out camping, doing events, whatever, and you get a little one and get a tick on them. And it's embedded. I remember one of the events we were at, a little bitty girl, she was probably about three years old and she had laid down on a blanket out in a shade and gone to sleep and a tick got in here under her armpit and got hooked on and Mama was terrified of trying to pull it out and break the head off. And so I took Vicks Vapor Rub and just smeared it on the tick, and we stood there, and within two minutes, he backed out, went walking around, and thump, goodbye. See, it's a great way to, to get them off of you without having to pull it out and run the risk of leaving the head. Now, tick-borne illnesses like Lyme disease, what's the giveaway? The bullseye. It's a certain type of tick. But more importantly, he has to be attached to you for a certain amount of time, usually like a day or 24 hours or something. So it's always important to check yourself. If you're in heavy tick area, every time you go take a pee, check yourself in any of the areas where they may have gotten. Definitely before you go to bed, do a full check. All the crevices, places you didn't think they could get to, check. Because we don't want you to get sick from them. Next thing is that after I've done the checks and everything else, if I find one, I get him off of me, etc. How about um, something like mosquito-borne illnesses or something like that? In your area, you may have something, you know, like malaria or whatever. Educate yourself to what the symptoms are. Also, if you get bit by whatever and it becomes red and kind of hot to the touch, and it don't quit that way, it may have been something like that. It means your immune system's fighting it. So you probably need to go to Doc and say, hey, Doc, you know, we've got West Nile virus or whatever right now, mosquitoes. I got bit and it's not going away. How about we do a round antibiotics or something? 
and they'll probably do that. A lot of times you can call them for something like that, and they'll let you do it to see if there's something we can do to nip it in the butt early on. Next, you've got bit. If you go look at Walmart where the, uh, and you can find it in other places, but where the bug repellent is and stuff like that, there's a little bitty tube of something called Sting Ease, E-Z. <laughs> It basically works exactly the same as if you'll go over into the arthritis section in the pharmacy area and they have this roll-on of lidocaine. Let me say that again. It's a roll-on, like a roll-on underarm deodorant, but it's called lidocaine and it's for putting on aches and pains like your knuckles, arthritis, whatever, you just roll it on. does the same thing. It's something you rub on the surface and it numbs minorly. It's meant to penetrate in for arthritis, but if you've got a bunch of bites right here and you don't want to scratch them and claw them up, rub that on them and it'll numb it down and keep the itch to a minimum. Okay? It works. I've had to use it several times. So, another thing before we ever go out. Take care of your skin. Moisturize your skin. Us guys, we don't think about that. Guilty, you know. But we're not as young and tough as we used to be. And this this is pretty soft now down here. That skin's not as tough as it was whenever you were dragging blocks off the back of a, of a truck, putting up trailers and setting up houses and stuff like I did when I was young. Them days is gone. And that skin is not nearly resistant, as resistant and tough as it used to be. And it's easy to get bites and stuff like that into it. It also dries out. If you can take your fingernail and do like that and see a white line, it means your skin's too dry. You need to do something to moisturize. If you've got a wife, ask her. There are lots of different kinds of moisturizing and lotion, stuff like that, that you can put on to soften your skin and keep it so that when you do get bit, you do scratch or whatever, it doesn't get worse because of it. I had uh, my arm outside of a tent not that long ago because I was doing a ground pounding thing and I had my arm outside the tent and I took a nap. It was a fairly cool day and the mosquitoes ate this forearm right here up. I bet I had 25 hits. And I would not pay any attention. Well, when I got home and I went there and took a shower, fairly cool shower and etc. and he just wouldn't quit itching. I mean, would not quit itching. It got worse and worse. If you ever scratch it, you just put gas on a fire. And so I took it and I put a moisturizer or something on there. Soften the skin up. Maybe it's dry skin to begin with and this itch has just triggered it, right? I let that go for about two hours and then I washed the arm again. And that kind of dampened it down. Then I used some roll-on lidocaine and put it on top of it. And that was the end of the itch. It didn't itch me anymore the rest of the night. Otherwise, I'd have been clawing it in my sleep. Our skin dries out as we get older. Our skin gets thinner as we get older. As my grandmother used to say, it was easy to knock the bark off of you, so you just bump something and you got a little bit of cut. That shows right there your skin's not moisturized enough. So, if you've got really dry skin, and it's one of them things that you can just take your fingernail and lightly pull and leave a white streak, start putting something on there legs, whatever, to do it. Usually it's not that way on our face, but it's usually on the arms or the legs that happens. Sometimes even up here on the chest. you got really dry skin, moisturize it. So that when you go out here, we've put up the first defense. I've taken some uh, vitamins to make me bitter where they don't want to eat me. B, I've treated my clothing and my gear to try to keep them away from me. Three, I have found some sort of bug juice that actually works well with my metabolism. Four, when I do get a tick or whatever, I've got Vicks Vapor Rub or Vaseline to get him off of me without tearing and leaving a bleeding sore. Next, uh, five, I've also got skin moisturizer and something like that to help keep me from itching so bad. Those layers, like layers of an onion, one on top of the other, means you're probably not going to have a bad experience out there. But it all begins with the preparation. 
just an honest statement to yourself. Hey, I am a little older. Yeah, the, the, the bark's got a little thin, and it's easy for me to get the bark knocked off and I bleed. Maybe you're on blood thinners, you know. So I really don't want something to start bleeding for any reason, you know. Even a tick bite could be a problem then. So therefore, I'm going to set myself up as many layers of this defense shield as I can to minimize my problems in the field. It's not something we like to think about or talk about. I know a lot of people go, oh, that's the area. We don't want to admit we've got older. We don't want to admit that our skin's got thinner and it's dried out and we just can't bounce back like we used to. But you got to be honest with yourself and do it and realize that if you want to be comfortable, if you want to enjoy this, this was the reason we were coming out with grandkids, wasn't it, was to enjoy it and not turn it into something we've got to endure. Remember what Nesmunk said, if you're roughing it, you're doing it wrong. All it takes is a little bit of preparation, a little bit of understanding, and a little bit of setup, and you're good to go. Hope you've enjoyed this content, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. And there'll be more videos coming up real soon. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.